Hello, welcome to Parametric House. In this Grasshopper tutorial, we want to use the Anomaly plugin uh, to produce a series of uh, random spheres on a curve. Uh, as you can see here, I can change the curve and produce new results. Uh, I can change the minimum and the maximum of the radius of the spheres here. And also there are two number starters which I'm going to explain and it's going to produce the different random seeds for the spheres. And finally you can bake that into a one mesh uh, component. As you can see here we're going to use the mesh union to convert it into one mesh and then you can use it for uh, maybe 3D printing it or uh, fabricating it. You can also extract the radius of each of these spheres uh, if you want to have more information about them and that's it. So let's get started from scratch and uh, make the final results. Before we get started, remember to like and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified about our new tutorials. Okay, first what I want to do is to produce a parametric curve. Uh, you can go to the params menu and pick up a point container, set multiple points. I'm just going to assume that we have this simple uh, curve we want to produce in the 3D space. So let's just go to the curve and use the spline interpolation. Give it to the vertices. And now we can update this curve. Okay, after we have produced the curve, we have to go to the anomaly plugin. You can simply search for loop and uh, if you hit Control alt click you can find it also here and what I want to do here is to use the fast loop because if you want to see an animation of those spheres you can use the classic but for uh, faster results I'm going to use the fast loop so let's just uh, pick up the loop start and the loop end and connect the top we have to connect the top for here okay the inputs are going to uh, from uh, start from here go inside the loop and get back to the data and make the loop possible so first what we have to do is to bring the curve inside the loop so obviously data is going to be the curve input uh, what I usually do is to rename all the inputs uh, in the start and the end so I know what I'm doing so here I'm going to give the curve here and also pick up a curve container so I know that I'm working with this okay uh, the next thing is the minimum and the maximum radius of the spheres uh, and we also need the sphere so I'm going to just zoom in and add two inputs spheres Why not we just have the radius here too? Make it domain. I'm also going to add two inputs, seed one and seed two. Okay, uh, so you can see we have to go to the D5 inputs. So I'm going to zoom in and make D5. Just double click here, you can see it's working. Now I'm going to rename these D1 to D5 to these inputs so uh, you can understand what I'm doing. Okay, now that we have all the inputs renamed, uh, what we have to do here is to produce a sphere at the start, right? Uh, let's go here and give the domain, uh, we can go to the math, and use this construct domain tool to make a domain. We just give a number slider to the minimum and maximum, maybe from two to 20 with two decimals. And this is going to be the minimum and the maximum radius we have. Okay, uh, so we have the output here. Uh, the next is two number sliders for the seed. You can start with one to 1000 and give this to the seed one and seed two because uh, some inputs are not going to change we just have to give them back to the outputs so seed 1 and seed 2 it's not going to change uh, basically uh, here we have the domain so I'm going to give back to the domain the radiuses is not going to change but we have to give it from the outputs and the spheres is going to be also produced by the outputs so uh, now what I want to do here is to work with the curve 
Uh, first, if we want to assume that we have the uh, first, how can we extract the radius right uh, from the domain? Uh, we can do that by going to the math sequence and using this random tool. Uh, the range uh, is the range of numbers we are going to produce, so we're going to give that to the domain. And the number we need is one because we just need one new number each steps we take. And for the seed, I'm going to use a math and add the seed one plus seed two to give it to the seed. And the most important thing is to uh, give this additional result back to seed one or seed two, doesn't really matter. And that is going to help us to change the seed number in each step we're going to take. Okay, so just remember that we have to make this addition uh, so we change the seed number each step we take. Okay, now that we have the curve and we have also the random number, as you can see here, this is the random number it's producing. So now what I want to do here, let me explain it. So assume that this is the curve and we want to produ uh, produce the first sphere uh, and assume that the radius is like, for example, 2.2, okay? What we have to do is to evaluate the curve here by the length of 2.2 and produce the sphere with the radius 2.2, right? And then just uh, uh, trim the curve with this sphere and produce that curve. Again, it's going to evaluate the length. Maybe the next one is uh, 3.5. So again, we have to evaluate the curve from here 3.5 and then produce the sphere okay so that is going to help us to produce uh, the spheres in a loop manner uh, I'm going to go to the mesh and use this primitive mesh sphere EX you can also use the uh, surface primitive sphere doesn't really matter uh, actually this one is going to give you more uh, a smooth result and the mesh one is going to give you a fast result it doesn't really matter let's just start with this uh, sphere we have a nerves sphere uh, for the base sphere what I want to do here is to make a point uh, let's go to the curve analyzes and use this evaluate length tool give it to the curve and the most important thing about evaluate length a component is that the normalized is by default true that we don't want that because when you normalize it, it's going to be, for example, if I give the length a 0 0.5, it's going to find the center of the curve. Or if I give it a 1, it's going to find the end. And if I give it a 0, it's going to give it the start. But actually, when we want to evaluate a length, we don't need this normalized type. So we have to make this into false. Just right click and make it a false, invert the Boolean. So it's going to be false. And now you can use the length easily. So I'm going to give this random output to the length and now I can give that to the base uh, sphere and the radius is going to also be the random here okay uh, another thing that we can uh, use here is a multiplication uh, of uh, the random because if we have the spheres exactly at the radius that it's tangent at the intersection we can't uh, make the boolean union right so we just have to make this radius a little bit smaller if we want to uh, or bigger if we want to intersect it so let's just give this uh, an input an x input again I'm going to rename that and we're going to start with smaller numbers if we want to make it smaller to maybe 1.5 Again, this number is not going to change. I'm going to give it back to the x. And then just multiply that random number. The length is not going to change because it's going to be the center, but the radius is going to be a little bit bigger if we make this number a little bit bigger than 1. So remember that this is going to, as you can see, it's going to get outside that. If it's smaller than 1, it's going to go inside. Uh, that's the most important thing we have to do here. And uh, now we can give the sphere to the spheres and remember to right click on the loop end and record the data. That's also really important. 
Okay, the next step is to uh, redesign the curve after we have evaluated this. Uh, we can go to the intersection region and uh, trim uh, with BREP. Trim with BREP, you can see that it's going to, okay, sorry, it's BREPs, trim with BREP. You can see it's going to trim a curve with a BREP. That is exactly what we need. We're going to trim this curve with the sphere. And find the outside. Right? And give back that to the curve. Okay, it says that the radius doesn't have an input, so uh, the radius is not going to change. I'm just going to give this number to the radius. Okay, just turn off everything. We have the curve, we have the control points. Uh, we have the spheres here. Just flatten this because we're going to increase the number of steps we want. So it's starting from zero to maybe 30. Okay, let's make this minimum and maximum smaller. And the steps more. Okay, now we want to play with the seeds to produce different results. And as you can see, it's going to produce like weird results here. Uh, this is the multiplication. If we make it smaller, they're not going to intersect, as you can see here. If we make it bigger, they're going to intersect. And finally, we can just want to put that into geometry because if we change it to mesh, it's easier to manage. And now we just have to go to the shape and use this solid union. And from the preview, I'm going to give it a custom preview so you can see the results. I'm going to do rendered mode, turn off everything. If I bake it, uh, you can see that it's completely united. If we go to the rendered mode, Remember that you can play with these numbers, make it smaller. Change this one, the minimum and maximum, the number where you want to produce, and also change the curve. Also increase the number of iterations if you want to produce more results. Just play with the seeds. This is going to be a multiplication. And that's it. That's how you can make the intersection. Okay, uh, if you want to make a mesh, simply just use the mesh primitive sphere x. The point and the radius is going to be the same. The count is five. I'm going to increase that to 10 because it's going to give you better meshes. Uh, that is going to Go outside to the spheres. Obviously, we can't use the solid union. We're going to use the mesh union. And give them to here. Okay. And that is going to also give you a mesh. Remember that you can play with these numbers to produce different results. That is really weird, as you can see here. It's like near these numbers for the smaller, smaller, bigger, smaller, bigger. If you want to see the radius, uh, you can just give a panel to the radius, just flatten it. And you can see that's producing completely random numbers for the radius and making that obviously these seed number two and seed number one is going to give you different results
Okay, that's it. That's how you can produce random spheres. Remember that you can always switch between this one to the nerves sphere, especially if you want to have a solid union and produce the final results. Uh, I hope this lesson was useful. Uh, remember that you can always give lots of inputs if you want to see the final results after you change the number slider easily. Uh, that's going to help you to get the final results. I hope this tutorial was useful. Remember to like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.